Just a weird view here for a second. We're gonna finish the orange garland that I started way back, uh, right before Christmas. Some of these got kind of crispy, so I'm just going to show how I am connecting the threads here between the different pieces, and then we'll get a better angle going to show you guys um, and just kind of talk about what's going on lately from a different angle. So I decided I'm gonna use any that had kind of a brown spot. And uh, see directions below, by the way. And I'm just taking like a pin. Some people use, you know, more um, professional tools, I guess. I'm just like, whatever. So I just pretty much make a hole just big enough for the twine to go into. Like, let's see if we can see the hole I made right here. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna take a piece of twine and even care if it's a hundred percent even I'm just doing this for fun something to keep my hands busy while we kind of chat and keep up catch up with each other oh my god did I just break that I just broke that let's try it again these orange slices I mean like I said they're like a week or two old now so it's kind of like maybe too late to be stringing these together but let's make it work shall we so there's a hole right there string it through and I'm just tying it in like a little knot and then I'm going to make, I'm going to string it into this next one. And you can see how it makes kind of a whole garland, very Victorian. See the link below for the directions. And for the previous video where I talk about drying these out and baking them in the oven, I will link that below as well. Also, pretty please like and subscribe. I promise this content will get better. But for now, it's just for us cool people that like to hang out and kind of heal our mental illness or improve our mental health through creativity, which is kind of the basis of my whole blog. So fun. All right, so let's get to our better angle here so I can kind of show you what's going on. One moment. Creak, creak, creak on the floor. Okay, this might. Yes, I think that zoomed in enough. This, like I was saying, might be the last video I make with this vlogging camera. Who knows, just not overly impressed with the quality We'll see, but for now it works. It's just getting us started here on this vlogging channel of mine. Please like and subscribe. We are working on the orange garland today, the orange slices that I started a few weeks ago before Christmas. Thanks for noticing how gorgeous my hair is. I just got it done at the salon. My girl, she just does it magic every time. Here's our orange garland. Maybe not the prettiest, most amazing thing in the whole world, but they still smell fantastic. And it's just a really cool little craft to work on with you guys while we kind of just catch up. These are 
the oranges that I made that I don't think it turned out in the last video I made where I put the cloves in. These still smell amazing. Might have another good week or so left in these guys. Oh, I thought you'd see them in the foreground, but that's okay. All right, so let's catch up, shall we? What has been new with you guys? How has your new year been? I know everyone is so relieved to be done with 2020. I mean, 2020 gave us a lot of things to be thankful for. And why do I say that? Because it gave us some trials and tribulations and some lessons to learn and I'm trying to stay positive and remind myself that when we are given hard times and hard things to go through, it's kind of like a, a blessing in a way because we're able to develop better, better tool to deal with things in the future, if that makes any sense. Lately, it feels like maybe the tools I've developed are still not so keen because I have been suffering from panic attacks, uh, severe, constant, daily panic attacks. And it's been rough. I'll just be honest. I just posted a blog about that. I'll link my blog below. I write, I've been writing a blog for five years about dealing with mental illness and improving my mental health through creativity. And I recently shared with you guys my struggles with them. I have been suffering from what you would call panic disorder. Um, since about 2008 is when I first started experiencing panic attacks, late 2007. Um, and I haven't really had much of an issue with them since 2008. Um, and then starting in December when I had a change in my job and a change in my career. And I think just also 2020 in general and getting used to COVID and not seeing family and not seeing friends. Uh, kind of took its toll on my nervous system. So I find myself panicking all the time for really no reason, just constant adrenaline rush. Bean, you're so sweet. I think I should zoom out a little bit so you guys can see her too. I don't know about you guys, but to, for me, seeing animals helps my anxiety so much. Like for instance, there's these uh, chickens in our neighborhood. So when we go on like neighborhood walks, I'll stop by and see them. And they just, they soothe my soul. Just, <laughs> just looking at them and like looking in their eyes, like any animal just helps me feel so much better. This is where we're at with the orange garland. So if you can see Bean, be soothed by her. She's been great. As many of you know, I lost my bestest friend and feline companion, Peanut, in March, right at the beginning of quarantine. It was like one of the very last appointments that you could get in person. I just can't even imagine having to do a euthanasia appointment and not being there. It's just too much. So yeah, I think um, I have learned a lot of different ways to deal with things. I got through 2020. I worked throughout the whole thing when I could. <laughs> And um, I kept going to work despite panic attacks, despite, you know, crying in the middle of shifts. So that's something really good I did. I continued to work out and lose weight. Super proud of myself for that. 
I learned that I don't have to just let myself shut down the way that I did very much so in, I don't know, the years 2015 through 2018. I didn't work. I barely left the house. I barely exercised. I was pretty much bedridden with depression during those years. And the fact that I was able to get through 2020, uh, going through all that, and I stayed out of bed except for when I was sleeping, that's huge. That's so huge. We need to remember the things that we've improved on, how we've gotten better, and give ourselves some credit, right? Like, just thank ourselves for showing up for ourselves. Speaking of showing up for ourselves, I did a really cool online virtual yoga class with my friend Sienna. She's a great yogi, just an all around amazing person. I can link her information below if you're interested in any of her classes. I did that on New Year's Day and that was super fun. I love yoga um usually in january i'll start the year out doing uh yoga because it's such a good like introspective thing to do at the beginning of the year to start the year off right so i did that on january 1st and i just forgot what it felt like to move my body and to stretch in those different ways like when I'm so anxious and stressed. I'm just like constantly in like a fetal position. Like my muscles are just all tightened up and like my back and my neck and my hips and just all of that. Um, and stretching out in that way, I, it reminded me like, oh yeah, I can move in these different ways. When I'm moving in these different ways, it releases different stress and pressure. And like it even reminds me of different memories it's crazy how much we store all sorts of information in our muscles and then when we finally stretch them, um, we're kind of releasing that old crap that we've been hanging on to. So it was good to release all that. So I took the oranges that kind of had like a burnt part, if you will, and kind of connected them with this twine. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of like a prettier, this kind of like red and white colored string and use some that are a little bit more, you know, aesthetically pleasing, no burn spots. And Bean's probably gonna keep, you know, biting them, but you can do that. You do you, boo. So I did that yoga class and Whew, I miss going to fitness classes. Um, if you've been reading my blog for a long time, you'll know that I got into gyrokinesis uh, at the beginning of last year. So this time last year I was doing gyrokinesis in this um, yoga studio that we had going in the upstairs portion of the store that I worked at downtown. And it changed my life. Mia, the instructor, absolutely amazing woman, taught me a lot of things about how doing these different exercises can improve our pelvic floor health and how that's so important, especially for females, especially if you have children, even if you don't, we need to keep those muscles tight and activated and working for us. And she helped me realize that there's different parts of my body that I'm not like quite keyed into. Like when we'd be doing work on a little stool, she'd be like, like your left foot is just kind of like sitting there. Like it's just like not engaging. Just weird little things like that that are kind of good to be knowledgeable about. So that when I'm working out at home, when I'm exercising elsewhere, I can be mindful of the different weak spots in my anatomy, if you will, so I can keep the strength up in those. It was just so cool, and I'm so looking forward to having access to that kind of thing again. I don't know, like, do you guys think that 
now that we're in this age of active pandemics that you know exercise classes things like that are going to be as popular <sighs> crazy right because everyone always says like when this whole thing is over when this is over blah 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 but I have a feeling that there's always going to be little residual effects and things that are going to be kind of permanently changed after our whole COVID crap. It's insane. Yesterday I packed up my Christmas stuff. I don't like taking down my Christmas decorations. My whole inspiration behind starting this vlog for YouTube was to talk about the different crafts and projects and things that I'm doing and how I'm decorating during the cold, dark winter season after Christmas. Like it's kind of depressing when we take down all the twinkly lights and all the extra little bright colorful toys and other things that we use to decorate with. You know things that belong to our family members things that bring back memories and then January we're still kind of plunged in these dark days of winter and shorter days not very much sunlight and then we take all that away from ourselves like all the twinkly lights all the magic all the fun ew so I want I wanted to work on celebrating more of just like life in general and keeping things festive and keeping things still merry and bright after Christmas and New Year. Um, my husband's birthday, Eddie's birthday is this week. So after New Year, we look forward to kind of uh, what I like to call in our house birthday season because his birthday is in uh, January and mine's in March. And then in between that, you've got Valentine's Day. So I'm kind of inspired by decorating for winter. I took down my obvious Christmas decorations, like things that had elves and Santa and candy canes and things like that. But I'm leaving up, and I'll show you guys all this. I'm leaving up on my mantle for now my uh, pine bow garland because I need somewhere to hang these orange slices too. Um, I'm leaving that up and like some of the little villages because even after Christmas we can still appreciate what small towns and towns in general look like in the snow. We can still leave out cute little villages and um, snowy scenes and I also kind of like leaving up things that are related to nature during the winter like gold and silver silver colored pine cones and leaves and sparkly branches little sparkly birds nests and I've got some little flocked deer and just things like that that are that doesn't have to be like screaming Christmas like oh it's still the Christmas season like no it's not we've moved on but we can still be festive and appreciate the magic of the season that we have to look for to appreciate it I'll also show you guys another little project I'm working on in our mud room. We've got kind of a weird little mud room with like two doors and it's not really finished, um, but it's kind of like a shabby chic look in a sense. And I have hanging back there a pair of um, like antique ice skates and um, a little sled and I ordered some twinkly snowflake lights that I'm going to hang back there with that so that'll be cute something that's just festive and fun it doesn't have to be Christmas to be honoring winter and the season then I love absolutely love Valentine's Day aesthetic everything pink and red hearts I just die for it I adore it um, it was kind of cool even on New Year's Eve when I was at Target getting things for our overnight bed and breakfast excursion. They already had the Valentine's Day stuff out at the dollar section and I was able to get some of that. So be sure to look out for that video as well because that was a fun evening at a um, 
a really cool historic bed and breakfast that's actually in our neighborhood. It's just up the street. It's a cool way, like we had the place to ourselves, like to just um, be safe, but still able to like spend a night outside of the house. Um, and support local business owners at the same time. I don't know, I felt really safe doing that. But we all have to decide what we're comfortable with doing and not comfortable with doing. That's another thing a lot of us had to learn about this year. I did, for sure. Yeah, see? So um, Eddie's been really busy at work. He's been working a lot more than usual. Um, so between that and then changing my job and like not having a reason to get out of the house that four or five days a week by going to work my shift at the store, um, really have, it's kind of like changed my schedule and I need more structure. I think that's why I've been suffering from these panic attacks. Helping these videos is, or making these videos has helped me so much. It gives me purpose and meaning. And just going through, even though obviously not very high quality, I'm not like amazingly good at this, like it's just something new for me to learn. And it gives me a way to talk to people that read my blog or not. But I was just thinking of my blog readers when I started doing this. Like, what do I talk about? Like, what do I say? Who am I talking to? I'm talking to you guys that read my blog, for real, because you guys have been with me for five years now, reading everything about me. I tell you guys every little thing, and I'm so grateful for that. So grateful. Another thing that I should be working on is doing like an online kind of class about blogging, not only for extra income which is nice I do love that because it's you know it can be hard and overwhelming to apply for monetization but also you know blogging to help with mental health to you know reach out and put things out there that you're struggling with and kind of form a little community like a community that I've formed of mental health warriors I have just two more of these red and white strings left. So I'm picking the very best orange slices to use. So Eddie's working a lot and tonight uh, more adventures in Lindsay making dinner. I am not the chef of the house by far. I studied nutrition and that only, um, I wanted to study nutrition so I could learn like how to make food and like what's healthy and appropriate. Like I learned what's healthy and what helps certain things, but I still love basic things. Like to me, if I lived by myself, if I wasn't married, if I wasn't worried about making food for other people, I would literally just drink juice, vegetable and fruit juice for every meal and just throw stuff into a blender. And like my favorite thing to make for lunch is throwing celery stalks and blackberries into a blender with water. And then I just drink it and that's my lunch. Like I love that. I don't really eat meat. Um, the main reason why I do is because Eddie likes it and we get it for our home and he um, serves it in dinner. So, I mean, it's good but I don't seek it out on my own. So if I lived by myself and I wasn't married, I would probably be more so like a vegetarian. Everything would be raw, like for real. I love just raw fruits and vegetables. And to make it even easier on myself, I love just throwing things into like a juicer or a blender. I used to get pressed juice all the time when we lived in San Francisco. I miss it so much but it's so pricey. So tonight I'm going to be making, I'm gonna be like baking some fish, 
that already has directions on it. I love getting a bunch of different kinds of fish that have the directions on them from our local um, meat market, like our local, um, what is that called? Butcher, like butcher shop. And he has all the directions on there and it's like super easy. So like tilapia, white fish, salmon, things like that. So I'm gonna be baking that since Eddie is working late again tonight and then just making a simple salad to throw the fish on top of. It's the very least I can do to help. And it might not be like the big steak and potato and Brussels sprout thing that he likes the most that he likes to make, but I know that he likes fish and salad too, and it's good for you. So when I'm done here talking to you guys, I will be, be I will be um, working on that for dinner. So I had therapy today and we talked a lot about my panic attacks and putting more structure into my day. So I need, let me, let me know what you guys think. I know with COVID and everything, like it's hard to meet face to face, but I need more like Zoom meeting chats. Like everyone's probably overdoing that. Like they're just over it, you know? But I still need to have little like social visits, even if they're virtual. And if you live here in Traverse City and you like to go for a walk, let me know. I need walking buddies. I need to be able to meet someone outside safely and not have to worry about getting them sick. Um, and just kind of, you know, add more little, like, little social dates to my life. She thinks that'll help. I know it'll help me immensely, actually. She's like, yeah, your husband doesn't always count. Like, he's great. I could do, I could literally work and be with Eddie all day, every day for the rest of our lives. And I would be so happy. Oh my gosh. I feel like that would be the ultimate Xanax <laughs> would be to be with Eddie 24 seven. But you know, it's important to have other friendships and relationships outside of that. We know this. So what are you guys doing to keep yourselves social and motivated? To me, like it felt like when I was going to work at the store downtown, at least, you know, I was kind of talking to them on a regular basis and you'd kind of just get a feel for like what other people are going through. And it was a kind of a way to just get out of your own headspace. And now that I'm not doing that, I need to fill it with something else. I love this new job, this career path. It's something that I've been planning on doing for a long time. We just had the ability to actually start it now. And I'm talking about our mortuary transport business that's gonna be official here in a few days. Our LLC has gone through, um, our insurance, our, you know, liability insurance and what is that like employee protection or something like that um but that will be kind of a solo job as well because i will be driving cases down to kalamazoo i'm looking forward to getting out on the road and doing that listening to the radio listening to audiobooks what do we think? This is my orange garland. I love it. And I am going to hang it up on our mantle and then I will show you guys what it looks like. And here's our final product. I love how the orange slices look uh, with the twinkly lights. And you can see I chose the different colored string in here. It's just really cool and kind of like festive, but also Victorian in a way. And um, I hung the other strand up here that I made with twine. 
on this little ladder that we have. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you for joining me in this little adventure of um, Victorian orange craft making. And make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel so that we can hang out more and um, be there for each other. And yeah, keep going and keep doing your thing and being a mental health warrior with me. And don't forget to visit me at my blog at lindsayloomis.com. I will talk to you guys soon.